This is the tenth video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. In last video, we talked about claims for negligence and breach of contract, and we talked about the elements of a claim for negligence. In this video, we're going to talk about the amount of damages recoverable in claims for negligence. Generally, the damages that are recoverable are nominal, compensatory, or punitive. Uh, nominal damages are a small amount, like a dollar or ten dollars. And nominal damages are awarded by the court in situations where they want to create a record that somebody is liable, uh, but that li but the, the situation does not warrant an award of any damages. Compensatory damages are designed to compensate the person who is injured uh, in a fair way for their injuries. One way to compensate someone for loss of an animal is the fair market value of the animal. Now, the difficulty with that is that for most small animals like dogs and cats, the fair market value is a relatively small number compared to the emotional value of that animal. In some cases, there is a claim for special damages where the animal has a unique value to the owner. So, for example, if the animal is a service animal, a seeing eye dog, that may warrant an award of special damages. General damages include claims for pain and suffering and emotional distress. I think the courts are very clear that there is no recovery for the pain, suffering, and emotional distress of the animal, and there is no recovery for the owner's pain, suffering, and emotional distress. Uh, consequential damages include things like expenses. If an animal is injured, the owner may incur some veterinary expenses to treat that injury as a, or as a result of that injury. Uh, lost income may result if the animal was a source of income. So, for example, if the animal worked in a petting zoo that generated income for the owner, one element of the damages in a negligence claim could be that lost income or the value of lost use of that animal. Uh, the cost to locate a substitute animal are usually pretty nominal unless the animal has some sort of special training, again, like a seeing eye dog. Punitive damages are exceptionally rare. Now, punitive damages are the big numbers that often hit the headlines. So those are the numbers that people see and remember, and they may think that they're very common, but the reality is they occur in a very, very small percentage, uh, one or two percent of the lawsuits that are out there, or they're actually awarded in a very small percentage of the cases. They're certainly alleged in more than that. And punitive damages are awarded only for willful, malicious, intentional, or fraudulent acts, or for gross or wanton acts of negligence. In other words, the veterinarian or the doctor has to almost intend to injure the animal. Hold on for a second. I may be having trouble with my computer here. And there we go. Hopefully we're back up and running. Let me check one more thing here. Okay. I apologize for that. So the real question I want to talk about is, is what's the damages for a pet dog? If a pet dog is injured or killed, how much should the owner recover? In 2013, the Texas Supreme Court got a chance to answer the question. And this is almost an ideal case for deciding what the value of a dog is. Uh, Strickland versus Medlin. Uh, in 2009, the owner went to the dog shelter in Fort Worth to pick up their dog, Avery. But the owner didn't have enough money on them to pick their dog up right then and there. The employee at the shelter told the owner, that they could come back in a few days and pick their dog up. The shelter then placed a hold for owner tag on the dog's cage because the owner said he was planning on coming back within the next few days to pick him up. Unfortunately, the shelter made a mistake and euthanized the dog the next day instead of holding him for his owner. Besides euthanizing the dog, the shelter also made a mistake because they didn't 
contact the owner to tell them about it. They waited until the owner came back a few days later with the money to pick up Avery. Uh, obviously, that was a shock to the owner uh, and resulted in a lawsuit being filed. Now, look at what happens in this case. There's almost no need for expert testimony because the shelter has promised we will hold the dog for you for a few days, but they breached that promise and destroyed or euthanized the dog. In the lawsuit, the owner alleged that they wanted to recover the intrinsic or sentimental value for this pet. And the question before the Texas Supreme Court was whether that value could be awarded. The trial court dismissed that claim. The Court of Appeals in Texas, in Fort Worth, made the decision that that claim could be pursued. And then it came to the Texas Supreme Court. So very unusual case in that the liability was very clear and very easy to prove. And this was a family pet with a high sentimental value, but a mutt that had very low market value, if any. So the case goes to the Texas Supreme Court. And if you take the time to go back and read the opinion by the Texas Supreme Court, Justice Willett actually goes out of his way to talk about dogs. The first words in the in the uh, opinion are that Texans love their dogs. Throughout the Lone Star State, canine companions are treated and treasured not as mere personal property, but as beloved friends and confidants, even family members. So you start out reading that and you think, okay, it may very well be that this court is going to find that sentimental value can be recovered. And the court is very empathetic to the owner. They, the court goes on to say, we recognize that the benefit of most family dogs like Avery is not financial but relational and springs entirely from the pet's closeness with its human companions. Measuring the worth of a beloved pet is unquestionably an emotional determination. What the animal means to you and your family but, and this is an important but, but measuring a pet's value is a legal determination. We are focused on the latter and as a matter of law, an owner's affection for a dog is not compensable. So even though the, the Texas Supreme Court and Justice Willett write very elegantly about the emotional and sentimental value of dogs, at the end of the day, the Texas Supreme Court says this is a legal question, and the question is, what's the market value of the animal? And that's the only damages that would be recoverable by the owner in this case. Other states that have dealt with this issue have made similar decisions. Here in Georgia, there's a claim for damages for death of a mixed-breed dachshund. As you can imagine, a mixed breed dachshund does not have much market value. But a pet dog, court says a pet dog has a value and is considered the personal property of its owner. Where an animal is negligently injured and subsequently dies, the proper measure of damages includes full market value and interest and the expenses incurred by the owner to cure the animal. Now, the reason this claim was pursued is there was a claim for $67,000 in veterinary and other expenses in the effort to cure the animal. Now, that should be, I think, an unusual circumstance. And I think some courts would look at that and say spending $67,000 to try to cure a dog that's probably only worth a few hundred dollars is not an expense that should be compensable. But in this case, the court did find that the owner should be awarded the market value of the animal plus those expenses that were incurred by the owner. Here's another case in Wisconsin. Uh, again, this court finds that the recovery is limited to the market value of the dog. The dog was 11 years old and was attacked by another dog. Medical bills of $9,500 were incurred plus $2,700 in expenses. The replacement cost for the dog was about $2,700. The 
court finds that dogs are personal property. For damaged personal property that is repairable, the general rule is recovery is limited to the lesser of the reduced value or the cost to repair, but in any event, recovery is limited to fair market value. So if the fair market value of this dog was $2,700, that was all the court was going to award, even though the owner spent $9,500 in doctor bills trying to cure the animal. Now I think in the Georgia case, that kind of decision uh, probably would have been appropriate, but it was not part, or maybe it wasn't even argued to the court in Georgia. Here's a case out of Ohio. The fair market value of the dog was $400 but the owner spent $10,000 on veterinary bills trying to treat the dog. The court, again, is sympathetic or empathetic to the uh, owner, but finds that the fair market value is the reasonable award of damages in this case. And spending $10,000 for a $400 dog is not a reasonable expense. And this is a Petco case. Now what happened in this case is the animal, licorice, was taken to the Petco store to be groomed. The groomers failed to control the dog. The dog got away and was eventually hit by a car and killed. The owner sued for a number of things and the trial court actually awarded nearly $40,000. But Petco came in and appealed that decision to the Court of Appeals who reversed the judgment largely, but awarded fairly small amounts. The replacement value for the dog was $500. Training school was $900. Microchip was about $50. The lost wages while searching for the dog were not awarded. Counseling costs for the owner were not awarded. $10,000 for mental anguish, $10,000 for intrinsic value, and $10,000 for exemplary damages were not affirmed or actually were reversed by the Court of Appeals. Now, what's interesting about this case is the owner did recover $6,750 in attorney's fees. Now, ordinarily in a case based on negligence, there is no recovery for attorney's fees. But there was a recovery in this case because the claim was based on breach of contract. And in a breach of contract case, the owner is able to recover the reasonable and necessary attorney's fees that they incur. So essentially what happened on appeal is the judgment was reduced from about $39,000 to about $8,000. That's a huge reduction, but it's still a fairly large number for a veterinary malpractice case involving a pet dog. Now this slide I want to point out a couple things. These are headlines. Keep in mind that headlines are not necessarily the final result. In many of these cases I am certain that even though there was a headline where a trial court awarded a large number, chances are very good even if the case wasn't appealed that it was settled for a number much, much lower than the amount awarded in the headline. So this first one out of Texas, $47,000 for a Schnauzer's death. Again, the dog got away from the pet store worker. That situation, I've not been able to find any court record of that case, so I can't tell you what actually happened but I doubt that the insurance company paid $47,000. Uh, next case involves a decision out of a Kentucky where a jury awarded $15,000 for the owner of a German Shepherd based on the in intrinsic value of the dog. Now, even though a jury might have found that value of the dog, that's not necessarily what the trial court awarded in its judgment. The trial court may have reduced it to the fair market value. And if the trial court didn't, it's very likely the case was appealed and that the appellate court reduced that value. Uh, last headline comes out of California where the judge awarded $28,000 for a Rottweiler who had to have his teeth capped 
after a bungled dental surgery. I seriously doubt, again, that that award was actually paid by the uh, insurance company. And this last case, again, comes out of California. A California dog owner is awarded $39,000. Jury finds the special value of the dog far exceeds $10 market value. Now, in this particular case, the veterinarians ran up $20,000 in veterinary bills. And I think that probably has a big part to do with why the... Uh, um, jury found that this dog had special value. I'm not able to tell you whether that judgment actually stood. Now, the owner of the dog spent more than $350,000 in attorney's fees and expert witness fees and other expenses taking their case to court. So they were pretty serious about this and were pretty committed to, to getting a decision in this case. And it might be an outlier where there actually was an award for that amount of money. But the reality is, short of the doctor misdiagnosing the animal, uh, providing unnecessary care and improper care, it's unlikely that that kind of award for loss of a pet dog is going to be sustainable. So the bottom line in, in small animal cases is the value of a pet dog, the amount awarded for a pet dog, is likely to be limited to the market value of that pet, not the intrinsic value of the pet. Uh, if reasonable expenses are incurred trying to take care and cure the animal, those expenses may be also recoverable. But if the expenses are unreasonable relative to the value of the animal, those expenses probably will not be recoverable. So because the amount of damages is, is so very small and because the expense of pursuing these cases is so high in terms of expert witnesses and attorney's fees, there are very few malpractice cases, veterinary malpractice cases involving small animals. The majority of veterinary malpractice cases are based on animals with a larger value like racehorses. In the next video, we'll talk about some specific rules in Texas that may help limit your liability in livestock cases.